We're going to look at how to do a cation exchange capacity measurement. And cation exchange capacity, or CEC, is a measure of the number of exchangeable sites within a soil for cations. The first thing we want to do is take our soil sample. Again, it's air dried, sieved to two millimeters. And the amount that we weigh is going to depend on the organic matter content of the soil. So if it's a low organic matter, we want to use about 10 grams. If it's a high organic matter soil, about 2 to 5 grams. So I've already weighed out a sample, and we're going to put that into a 100 mil centrifuge tube. And the method that we're going to use is the ammonium acetate method. So this is a fairly standard all-purpose method and the solutions are buffered at a pH of 7. And the ammonium ion is also a good ion to choose for replacing the other cations. I'm going to add my first extraction solution, which is the ammonium acetate. So we're going to add 40 mils of ammonium acetate. So one molar solution. And stopper that up. And we want that to shake for about five minutes. So if you're doing a lot of these samples, you want to line them all up in your tray and put them on an automatic shaker. And then you want to let it stand overnight. So let's pretend We've had a good night's sleep, we've come back, and the next morning we're going to shake them up again for 15 minutes. So after 15 minutes of shaking on the shaker, we're ready to do our first filtering. So you want to make sure before you do this next process that you have all your solutions on hand and ready to go. And what you need is a one molar ammonium acetate, which we've already used, isopropanol, and also a one molar potassium chloride solution. So you want to set up your vacuum flask and Buchner funnel. So we have our vacuum flask. Put the funnel on top. If you happen to think about it, if you slant the long end of the funnel away from where the vacuum comes out, it's less likely to suck liquid into the vacuum. And then hook that up to the vacuum apparatus. We need a filter paper in there. We're going to use Wattman 42 filter papers. And you want to pick the size that fits nicely in the top of the funnel covering all the holes that are in there. Start the vacuum so that it um, sucks down the paper and none of the soil seeps underneath. And pour in our sample. So what's happened with this first extraction is that the ammonium ion from the ammonium acetate has replaced all of the cations that were originally on the exchange site. So what should be coming out, because it's been displaced into the solution, is our calcium, potassium, magnesium ions. And we just want to give a little rinse of the stopper. And we want to rinse out our tube to make sure we get all of our soil sample, because we're going to be further um, extracting or rinsing the sample. you need to do a couple more rinses with ammonium acetate. So we'll do four washes with 30 mils of the ammonium acetate solution. So we have this handy dispenser that does an approximate volume for us. So there's one rinse, Two rinses. 
So again, what we're doing here is displacing all the original cations and replacing them on the exchange sites with the ammonium ion. So we want to discard of this bottom solution because today we're not going to measure for any specific cations. So we'll just disconnect the flask and dump out what's left in the bottom. And now we're ready to do our next rinse, which is with isopropanol. And then we'll move on to our next rinse, which is isopropanol. So turn the vacuum back on. And we want to wash with 40 mils three times of isopropanol. So what this is doing is just rinsing out the excess ammonium that is in the soil and that isn't actually absorbed onto the exchange sites. So let's say we've already done our three rinses with 40 milliliters of the isopropanol and this filtrate again we're just going to dispose of because it's just been a rinse and we're not interested in anything that's in the filtrate. So the final rinse or step is with potassium chloride. And the idea here is that um, the potassium ions are going to displace all of the ammonium ions that are currently on the site and then we can measure how much ammonium was there. So we're going to wash with potassium chloride four times 50 mils each time. And you want to make sure with these rinses that you don't go over a total of 250 mils because that's the final volume we're going to make it up to. So I'm going to take the filtrate that contains the ammonia we want to analyze for and pour that into my volumetric flask. If you are not feeling that confident about your transferring skills, you, you might want to use a funnel and a funnel rack. And then you want to take up the volume in the flask almost to the line. So use some extra potassium chloride solution to do that. And we'll take it up close to the line. And then we'll stop before we get to the line. And then when it's just below the line, you want to grab a squeeze bottle and finish it off so that the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus, is just at the line. And that way you know it's exactly 250 mils. So you're aiming to have the bottom of the meniscus just at the line. So once we've made it up to volume, we need to mix it. So you want to stopper it up. And when you're mixing volumetric flasks, you want to be aware that the air bubble goes all the way to the bottom and all the way back up to the top of the neck again so that it's thoroughly mixing and it's safe for most solutions 15 to 20 times to invert it for full mixing. Once your solution is mixed we don't need this much of sample to analyze for ammonium so we'll just take a small amount and transfer it into a smaller container and that's what we'll send for analysis. So about 60 mils will do for the FIA analysis. So that's the part we want to save. That will go straight for analysis or into the fridge and make sure you label that container with your sample code and also with the date so that you know exactly what is there and are able to trace your samples. So that sample will now go for analysis of ammonium and one way to do that is a colorimetric method using flow injection analysis.